Hello, today we're going to talk about She Unnames Them by Ursula K. Le Guin. This story is um, an example of flash fiction, so it's a very, very short story uh, that still manages to tell kind of a complete narrative. A little bit of background information about Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, she was influenced very heavily by some of our most famous male fantasy and sci-fi writers, especially Tolkien, Philip K. Dick, and C.S. Lewis. Um, and as you can see, and as you may know, uh, when fantasy really took off as a genre in the 1930s and 40s, um, it was very much a, a, a boys club. There were not very many women fantasy writers. And even today, there are more male fantasy writers than, than females. Uh, so Le Guin was very much entering into a space as kind of a pioneer. There were not many women doing this work. Uh, and she was very good at it. So she uh, won a lot of the awards uh, as, a, as the first woman often. And she's won, for example, the Hugo Award. She's won it multiple times and was one of the first women to do that. Uh, all that said, um, her fantasy and sci-fi uh, usually has a literary quality to it, by which I mean that the quality of the writing is what we would expect to see in uh, a literature book rather than maybe a paperback at the bookstore. Um, so she has a very, very sophisticated writing style. And she also usually has some kind of deep underlying current theme, uh, something like that, which we might not always see in a fantasy novel. Um, so because of that, she wants she wanted in her lifetime to be known more as just a novelist rather than a sci-fi novelist or a fantasy novelist. So this particular story that you read, She Unnames Them, is based on the story of the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve. So Eve is our main character and is um, slowly going through all of the animals in the Garden of Eden and removing their names. Um, and so to really kind of understand and appreciate where the story is coming from, we have to look at the source material. So this is from the second chapter of Genesis. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam would call every living creature, that was the name thereof. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. So it's very much... Um, a patriarchal situation, right? So we have a, a kind of a male god who created the uh, creatures in the first place, and then we have the male Adam who then gets to name and classify them. And in the second chapter of Genesis, God sends Eve to Adam last after all of the animals, and Adam chooses her name, woman, um, just as he's chosen the names of the animals. Uh, so Eve is, just becomes another kind of animal for him to name, and he literally decides to call her woman. So he comes up with her base identity. So all of the power in the story is seated with the male characters, and the female character is just very passive. She's just another creature that gets a name from a man. And so this story is trying to undo that power structure. So Eve, uh, we want to notice a couple of things Le Guin is doing here with Eve. First of all, you notice that Eve's name is never mentioned in the story. Uh, Adam's is, but Eve's is not because she has rejected it, right? So at the very end of the story, Eve says that she doesn't want her name either. And so that's very significant that her name is never mentioned in the story because she has already rejected it. I also want to point out that unname isn't even a word. It's not in the dictionary. So Eve is envisioning an entirely new world where she makes the rules. She makes the language itself. She gets to like re-choose um, not just what everything is called, but what is and is not a word. By removing the animal's names, she is then allowing them to determine their own identities. Um, she is allowing the animals to decide who they want to be again, as opposed to giving them new names. Uh, she just kind of lets them be. 
so that's that's kind of a significant idea. So um, in this story, we have Adam as as needing to classify everything. He's not satisfied until everything has its name. And so when Eve unnames the animals, she doesn't rename them. She leaves them unnamed because she wants them to. She wants to empower them uh, and empower herself to do what they want to do. In addition to um, allowing the animals to determine their own identities, removing their names also breaks down the barriers between the animals. So we learn in the story that once they don't have names anymore, um, some of them kind of form a community that they might not have before. So the, the prey and predators come together and, and overlap. Um, so Again, we have this idea that the male power was very binary, meaning that everything had its place and one thing was set against another, everything was clearly defined, everything had its role and its job. But the woman is more comfortable with uh, fluidity um, and she doesn't want to build these artificial barriers. She wants everything to be what it is in its truest nature and she knows that that's not hers to uh, put onto the creature. Um, one of the reasons I gave you this story is because throughout the semester we have talked so much about how the Adam and Eve story uh, influences all of women's literature. So, so many of the kind of sexist ideas that have appeared in literature throughout the ages have been based on that one idea that Eve was uh, a broken woman and that all women therefore are weak or temptable or what have you. And so taking this story, which is the root of so much of that evil, and rewriting it is really powerful. Um, Adam also is kind of classified as um, not only, like he's very powerful in terms of like wanting everything to have its name, but then in the end uh, when Eve leaves him, he doesn't really even care. He asks her what time dinner will be, and he doesn't seem to notice that she's leaving. So he has really taken his power for granted. He's not even uh, realizing anymore, you know, the, the um, suppression of those who he's been ruling over. Um, and finally, I like this idea that Eve becomes the writer of her own story. So Eve becomes... Uh, kind of a new creator or uncreator, uh, whereas we thought of God and Adam as being um, really the leaders of the narrative. And then uh, if we take a step back as well, Le Guin becomes the retailer of one of our most important uh, myths, which is this idea that, um, you know, it's written by a man, it's kind of written for men, women are very passive and submissive, and Le Guin totally rewrites that story for a female audience and imagines almost like a female creatress. Um, so I think that's really a powerful idea. I hope that you enjoyed this little story. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.